In this video, I'm going to introduce basic use of WX Maxima, uh, and we're going to deal with some built-in functions while we're at it. Uh, but I thought I'd start out with this quote. This is a quote that I actually meant to have in the first video, but I forgot it. Uh, I thought it was kind of interesting and very applicable to what we're doing here. Uh, Gottfried, Leibniz, Gottfried Leibniz said this. He was one of the co-creators of calculus, and there, that in itself is a whole interesting story about the competition between him and Isaac Newton. Uh, and he was talking about mechanical calculators. You know, long before they had computers, uh, he was talking about a mechanical calculator. And I forget what the name of the calculator that he invented was called, but he said, It is unworthy of excellent men to lose hours like slaves in the labor of calculation, which could safely be relegated to anyone else if machines were used. And I thought that was kind of interesting just because, you know, um, machines can be so incredibly helpful in math. Now, it's obviously still very important that we understand what's going on. We don't want to lose sight of that. But um, even so, I still thought this was kind of kind of interesting anyway. So uh, let's go ahead and get started with the video. I don't want to bore you with a history lesson. So this video um, is going to be pretty tedious um, because it's going to be the ins and out of using WX Maxima. But bear with me. Uh, after this, it's, it's all downhill from here. Now let's try simple arithmetic. So let's try 2 plus 5. I just typed it into its cell. Um, and to evaluate in WX Maxima, you hold Shift and hit Enter. Uh, don't forget to hold the Shift key. You can change the settings so that Enter alone evaluates, but I personally like to keep it the Enter as the line break because that becomes in very useful when you're writing scripts later on. Uh, now, parenthetically, if you run Vanilla Maxima through the command line, and here I'll go ahead and bring that up for you just so we can see what it looks like. So. Um, if we start Maxima, so here's just a regular Maxima. This is not through WX Maxima, it's just Maxima. And in this case, Enter actually will evaluate. So you do 2 plus 5, oops, that's equals 5. 2 plus 5, I just hit Enter, it didn't hit Shift, and it gives me the answer. Um, but the one thing that WX Maxima does automatically, and you can see it here, I didn't type in the semicolon, it put it in there for me that's part of the Maxima syntax. Uh, if you use Maxima Vanilla, you have to put it in manually. Uh, while using WX Maxima, it's not important to put it in manually, but if for some reason you have a need to use the Vanilla Maxima, you'll need to know to put it in. Uh, and we also will, whenever we're writing scripts, need to use uh, semicolons, uh, but that's for a later video. From this point onwards, though, I'm going to assume that you're using WX Maxima and not the Vanilla Maxima because otherwise the videos would get to be too complicated trying to keep track of which one's which. So, um, oh, also, if you end your command with a dollar sign instead of a semicolon, let's let's go ahead and do that. Uh, oops, I've turned off number lock. Two plus five. Now do dollar sign instead of semicolon. Let's look what that does. It just hides the output. So if you end the command line with a dollar sign instead of a semicolon, the output is hidden. For now, that might seem strange, but it will be useful later on when we use a lot of intermediate steps and we don't want to see the immediate results. Now notice the bracket to the left of the input and the output. Uh, the expression, um, like, like this area here, is called a cell, uh, similar to like what you would say in a spreadsheet. Uh, you can and you can also select a cell or multiple cells um, and you can delete them and you can delete multiple and all at once and you can uh, select all as long as your te if your text is in a cell then select all will select the text within a s within the cell but if your if your cursor is outside a cell then select all will select all cells you can also click the triangle at the top of, of the top left and it'll hide the contents of the cell. That way, if you have long lines of code, and you don't want to, you don't want to delete this cell, but you want to, you don't want to see that every time you scroll by. That could be very handy. Uh, let's see, where all was I? Notice the red X button here. 
if Maxima is doing a particularly complex calculation that takes a long time to do, or if it's misbehaving, this X button will interrupt whatever Maxima is doing and it'll return use return control to you. Now it takes about three or four seconds for it to recognize it, and then it'll say it gives you a Lisp error. But um, but you'd want this like say you did something that you're that's taking a long time and you changed your mind you didn't want to do it anymore you can you can say you can click this and it'll stop it and this area right here that says ready for user input if maxima is doing something um and it's taking a long time to do it it'll say maxima is calculating uh so sometimes if it's not really responding if you if you try to evaluate a cell it doesn't do anything looking to see if look to see if it says maxima is calculating cuz that means it's busy uh, okay, if you're, um, oh, also, control G, so holding down control and hitting the G key will do the same thing as the red X. So the formatting for simple arithmetic is, uh, pretty similar to most other programs, like something you'd have, like, if you're familiar with the TI-83 calculator series, uh, it's pretty similar to that, like the... 2 plus 5 is addition, 2 times 5 is multiplication, this star, that's the same as, as shift 8. Um, and you can use parentheses, uh, slash is used for division, so 3 fourths will give you 3 fourths. Um, if you're like me, you'll be using parentheses a lot, and the caret is used for exponentiation. So this caret, which is shift 6, is used for exponentiation. One thing to note is that maxima input does not recognize implicit multiplication. So if you have 2x, it is not recognized as 2 times x. See, it gives an error. Um, so 2x, you, you need to go ahead and put the star in between. Also, same thing here, 3, 4, like this implicit multiplication is not recognized. It gives me a syntax error. You have to actually put the star in between. So I'd say like 2 times x and then it'll return 2x or 3 times 4 will give me 12. That might seem like a disadvantage now. It's actually a very good thing. I know that might seem strange but it really is because it avoids ambiguity in command syntax later on, and it also lets us assign distinct values to variables like x1 and x2, so we can say that x1 is a certain, has, we can assign that a certain value, and we'll get to that later on in this video. Uh, now with WX Maxima, this is this is a little bit kind of sort of unusual for um, CAS programs, but you can go back and edit previous commands. Um, I think you can do that in Maxima and Maple, but for a lot of math programs, you can't. Like I know that in um, in MATLAB, you can't do that. You have to just create a new one with the old text, um, and uh, that can be really useful. And also notice that the output. Um, has a percentage and then an O and a number. That means that the output is assigned to this variable automatically. And you can recall that output and use it in another calculation by typing in that command. Like let's say, for example, we want to recall this 2x. Well, we can say that it's percentage 0, 08. Oops, I put 9. 0, 08. Note that that's um, O, not 0. And we want to add x to that. And so we evaluate it, it gives us 3x, because percent 08 is recognized as 2 times x. Um, also, oh, you can also use the percent sign alone. And uh, the percent sign alone will recognize the most recent output. So if I do percent plus x, you'll give me 4x, because 3x is recognized as the most recent output. Now, that's always most recent. That doesn't necessarily mean the one above it. So let's say I want to evaluate this cell again. It's going to give me 5x because the most recent output was 4x. Even though I'm overwriting it, technically speaking, the most recent output was still 4x. So the percent sign is the most recent output. It's kind of like using um, answer, like ANS for the TI-83. Now you can also assign values to variables manually, and that's going to be very important later on. You do that by typing the variable you want to use, like I'll say A, and then 
do colon in the value that you want to assign to that variable so like 5 and then evaluate the cell and it assigns a as 5 so if I want to say what is a it'll return 5 if I want to use a in something else a is now recognized as 5 um, what this means then is that Maxima no longer recognizes A as a symbol, but as a norm, but as a number. Uh, to clear the assignment and have Maxima recognize it as a symbol again, uh, type kill and then in parentheses the variable. So that means now A is recognized again strictly as A. To clear all variables, and this will also clear all functions too, but we're not there yet. Um, you do kill all, and that will clear all the variables that you have. Um, now Maxima has plenty of built-in constants like pi, you know I'm sure you've seen pi before. If you haven't seen that before then this program is probably a little bit beyond you. Uh, so um, pi, Euler's number which is represented as e um, and i which is the square root of negative one. Uh, so to call them up, you need to use the percentage sign again. So if I want to call up pi, I'd say pi. So if I want to do the sine of, uh, let's make it cosine. Cosine of pi, and it returns negative 1. And if you want to use e, so if we say e, oops, e to the power of um, pi times I. This should look familiar. Now I'm going to go ahead and add 1 to it. It returns 0 because that's the famous equation. e to the power of pi i plus 1 equals 0. That equation might look familiar to you. Um, it usually appears in a calculus class at some point, but it's a kind of a later thing. It's something that you deal with whenever you deal with power series. It's well, it, it might come up, not necessarily, but at any rate, the thing that's really important here is that um, this is how you use um, constants in Maxima. Now, if I'm feeling lazy, uh, and I often do, I will just assign pi as pi. So I'll say, here's the new variable pi, and I'm going to assign it to pi. So that means pi is now recognized as pi. And e, so if I want to sign, I can sign i as the constant i. So I can do i squared and do negative 1. Now, notice here that the output has the percentage in front of it. In some of the newer versions of WX Maxima, I believe you can have that replaced with, uh, you can have have it so that the output does not have the percentage sign. Um, but that version of WX Maxima has not yet been put into Synaptic. So that means I haven't gotten it because I'm too lazy to get it directly from SourceForge. I just got it from the Synaptic Package Manager. If you're not a Linux user, you have no idea what I'm talking about. And that's fine. Okay, but we don't always want to express exact answers. You know, if if someone says, how long is this road going to be? If if you say it's uh, pi miles, they're, they're going to say, what is that? That means nothing to me. So, you know, root two miles. Okay, that that's stupid. Um, so if we want an engineer solution, we want a decimal representation. And you know, a lot of times we do want an engineer solution. And for that, we use the command float. And I believe that float is in this menu to float. I've, I've never used it, but um, I mean, I've, I've used the command. I just never use it from this menu. So let's say we want the uh, float representation of the square root of 2. So that means 1.41, blah, 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 blah. So that means square root of 2 is equal to 1.41, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'm going to clear all this stuff off. Okay, so now for the the next thing. Um, generally speaking, Maxima will do some simplification on its own. Like if I want to do the square root of 60, oh, that's 6, not 60, it simplifies it down to 2 root 15. But, or if I want to do x plus 2 uh, squared over x plus 2, it simplifies it just to x plus 2 because this is x plus 2 
quantity squared over x plus 2, oops, well that cancels, so it's just x plus 2 left. So it did some simplification on its own. Uh, but it doesn't always do the simplification on its own. So let's say I have x squared plus 4 times x. Remember to put the star in between because it doesn't recognize implicit multiplication. Plus 4 over x plus 2. Okay, well there's actually some simplification to be done here because this top term is going to be equal to x plus 2 quantity squared. So since I didn't write this um, so explicitly as x plus 2 quantity squared, it didn't automatically um, simplify it for me. But obviously, I mean, it can still do simplification, it's just not automatic. You can tell it to do different kinds of simplification. So let's clear all this off. Like um, RATSIMP, so this stands for rational simplification, and I use the parentheses, I mean the, not parentheses, the uh, uh, I can't believe this is blanking out on me. Percentage, yeah. I got the, starts with the P. <laughs> so I use the percentage sign to represent the previous output, and I hit enter, and it simplifies to x plus 2. So that's one type of simplification. Um, but it won't simplify trigon trigonometric expressions using identities. So if I have cosine x squared plus sine x squared, Okay, well, if I do rat simp on that, it's still going si to say sine squared plus cosine squared, and we know what co so sine squared plus cosine squared is, but there is another type of um, simplification. It's trig simp. That will use trigonometric identities and simplify down, in this case, to 1. Uh, and just so you know, maxima is pretty consistent in how it represents answers but it rarely, if ever, rationalizes denominators. So let's say I have 1 over square root of 2 plus 3. Okay, well, it just wrote 1 over square root of 2 plus 3. It didn't bother to simplify the denominator. It's just not even concerned about that. On the other hand, if I write square root of 2 minus 3 over, over negative 7, well, this... Th this and this these are actually equal because this is the this is the it, this is this once you rationalize the denominator um and sometimes it'll express answers in an unusual oops let me clear that off sometimes it'll express answers in kind of an unusual way like square root of 125 it d doesn't say 5 root 5 it says 5 to the power of 3 halves which is a little bit strange and this is my most common frustration with Maxima. I think, I think, personally, I think this is Maxima's biggest fault. Uh, but even, even though, so it's good to get it out of the way in the first couple of videos. Even so, even though, in spite of this, I've got an amazing use out of this program. You have no idea. But, but this can still be pretty frustrating. Ultimately, the best way to see if two answers are equal is by using a command that does it. So it says is, and then parentheses equal. And then I'm going to say output of 34, so um, percent 0, 34, um, percent 0, 35. What this, what this does is it says, is the, are these two things equal? And if they are, it will return true. So it says that the output of 34, which is this right here, and the output of 35, which is this right here, are both equal. So this returns that those two things are equal. Um, and that's often the best way to see if two answers are equal. Okay, so almost everything that we've done so far can be reached in WX Maxima's interface and somehow or another. I mean, I, I haven't been doing it through it just because I've been a little bit lazy I guess um, because I already know what the commands are but you can you can in fact go to these different commands it'll bring up a prompt like if I want to factor out oops I forgot that that's how it does that so you have x so you have x squared plus 4 times x plus 4 okay if I press the factor button it will factor out the previous output 
so it factors it out to x plus 2. Um, but later on, we're going to go beyond these buttons, and also there's a bunch of menus here. You can differentiate, you can integrate. I don't even know what that is. I've never heard of it. Um, you can find Laplace Transform. I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, I don't think I've ever used that function, but because I don't really deal with ODEs very often. Um, there's a lot of matrix stuff under the algebra menu. So, um, later on, though, we're going to be using Maxima's manual, um, which can be a, a lot more difficult to to gather information from, but absolutely invaluable. Uh, I mean, I've, it's really amazing, some of the stuff that's in there. And to do that, when you use that manual, you need to look at the syntax of individual commands and possibly some examples if any are available. Uh, there is also a command, um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, this part wasn't scripted, so hopefully this is, um, I hope this is right. So let's say I want an example of the command factor. Ah, whoa, gave me a lot of ex examples. So if you use the command example, it'll give you a... Wow, this is some doing some stuff I didn't even know it could do. <laughs> um, so it gives you a lot of examples <laughs> using. Exa oh, and here's a partial fraction decomposition example. Uh, I was going to do that in the next video too, so we'll see an example of that. Um, substitute is kind of an advanced command, and we'll get to that in a later video too. So a couple of final thoughts. Th a couple of final thoughts for this particular video. If Maxima is misbehaving in a really bad way, you can restart Maxima from the menu. So you can go to Maxima, restart Maxima. This will. Uh, I'm going to delete this cell because it's in the way. This will um, completely restart the Maxima program. It will not restart WX Maxima. This is kind of a technical thing. It will re it will not restart the front end pro the front end program, which is WX Maxima, but it will restart Maxima itself. So that means that the back-end program has been restarted. Um, none of the variables are recognized any longer. Um, basically, it just means you're restarting Maxima. So if it starts doing funky things, that probably means that you inadvertently, and I do this all the time, that probably means that you inadvertently defined a function in such a way that it's doing strange things. Um, and that means you just go to Maxima, restart Maxima, and it, it fixes it for you, generally speaking. Um, lastly, Maxima can save projects. You can do Control S and it'll, whoops, um, it will um, bring up a, a menu and you can save it as a WXM file. So it only saves input strings though. It doesn't actually save output. So you need to um, Reopen when you reopen the project. You need to reevaluate all the cells. That includes saved variables and functions and things like that. The next video will include more of WX Maxima's built-in functions, and from here on out, it should be significantly less tedious. And hopefully, in the coming videos, you'll see some of the incredibly useful things that Max that Maxima can do, and why I think it's absolutely fantastic. All right, I will see you in the next video.